you for a faithfulness. Way of ruling. 
I was born in the Philippines where there is a president, senators, mayors, governors, councillors. Those type of ruling where there is no turn. There is no turn. This is our, oh sorry, this is our uh, verse for tonight. Can we all please stand and uh, read it with me? Three, two, one, go. As he came from his mother's womb, naked shall he return. To go as he came, and he shall take nothing from his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba, for the message that you have prepared for us tonight. I speak open hearts. I speak open minds. I speak strength. I speak encouragement to each and every one. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can all be seated. Ownership is the state or fact of exclusive rights and control over property. Meaning, ownership is only something or someone. That is the, the principle of the world. It involves multiple rights collectively referred to as title. title which may be separated and held by different parties. The process and mechanics of ownership are fairly complex. One can gain, transfer, and lose ownership of property in a number of ways. To acquire property, one can purchase it with money, trade it for another property, Win it in a bet, receive it as a gift, inherit it, find it, receive it as damages, earn it by doing work or performing services. One can transfer or lose ownership. That's the reality. Ownership is self property and that the owner of any property will also own the economic benefits of that property. If you own a certain land, especially in our place, this is, this is a saying in terms of savings, only lands are not depreciating. It always appreciates the value. It always appreciates. That's why when you when you ask a, a, a life coach or, or or someone, they will uh, advise you or or, or uh, suggest to invest in lands. We need to be careful on this word ownership. Because in the kingdom, there is no such thing. In fact, this spirit is so damaging in the citizens of God. Ownership. You know, every time someone is, is releasing the word of God, it is the first to learn or the first being rebuked is the one who is releasing it. So I don't know, I ask God why 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 am I the one who who are chosen to release this? Simple. He wants me to learn. Because I myself, my wife is here, my my sons. I being the, 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 the father of the family, uh, 
I've, I've made some bad decisions before. I've made mistakes. That is, in reality, still being manifested in our lives. I cannot say we lack. All I can say is we are learning. Been there, that that chance. Wrong decisions made. Uh, that is still has an impact in our lives. But God is so faithful. Oh, <laughs> Ownership is talking about individualism. This is mine, that is mine, that is mine. So, uh, when, when, when the Lord gave me this, uh, I, I, I don't have any idea that He is teaching me. All I know is, this is the topic that I will be sharing with you guys this night. But, of course, as expected, the Word of God is like a double-edged sword Amen. that will penetrate to the bone marrow. <laughs> so, I was the one who is being taught first, and then you. Spirit of ownership is very dangerous, why? It creates, number one, limitations. It creates frustration, depression, contention, scarcity. You know scarcity? It creates lack. It causes people to steal. The spirit of ownership creates poverty. Because people like it, it, they, they feel like uh, that they, they are not getting what they deserve. They are getting depressed because in their minds, I deserve that. I want that. That is my plan. As was released earlier, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> Lord, you're so proud. Lord, communicate. Lord, this is my plan. In five years, this. In, in seven years, this. In ten years, this. Then the Lord will laugh at you. <laughs> because he will just tap you in, on, on your back and he will tell you, I have better. Amen. 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 The spirit of ownership is so dangerous that it actually creates sickness, disease, and sometimes death. You're so driven in that plan, in that dream of yours, that you are, <coughs> that you are, uh, Claiming that it is your vision, but it ended up as ambition. That's different. Many Christians now, not, not here, your Facebook friends, <laughs> that is proclaiming, claiming that this is the vision of the Lord for me. The vision of the Lord for me, you, sister, will be my wife. Ambitious. To the point that in that life, you will have to make extra efforts. You are, let's say you are working from 8 to 5, and after that, 
in order for you to get through that road of your self-proclaimed vision, you will work again to a second shift or a part-time job. You are coming to office, working at uh, an office from 8 to 5, and then you will take a security job. Because that is the hobby. <laughs> that is the only uh, available for you. So meaning it it took you your time to the extent of not being with your your spouses, your, your husbands, your wives, your children, the church, your your relationship with God. That's why it's so dangerous. No ministry. And at the end of the day, you got yourself a sick body. Because of that force. Because of that ownership mentality. Because of that ownership spirit. Gentlemen, great ladies, one thing is the reality, is the reality that we can stand upon in this Christian life that we are talking about. The only alternative is heaven. The only way is that thing. Jesus. Jesus. There is no other way. Yes. Amen. There is none. So that's why the Lord came to the earth. One main reason, aside from, of course, He redeeming us, aside, of course, from saving us, is to take us out of that spirit of ownership to that. Of him from, his, from ownership to his lordship. Amen. That is why every Friday uh, we can we can we can feel that God is really serious of bringing us to living in his kingdom. To really live in his kingdom. Just Last night, I have heard me and apostles and uh, some other brethren. There is one pastor that has released on his opening speech. Why are we listening to the gospel of the kingdom? Why not the gospel of Jesus? And then I don't know what had happened because I I ran to the CR because I cannot I cannot take it. The reality is there are preachers with all to respect that searched, study just to have something to preach. Without knowing, they are releasing opposite of what the Lord Jesus is preaching. He, he released in your face, why not the gospel of Jesus? Why the gospel of the kingdom? I wanted to, to shout at him very badly. But then again, at the end or at, in the middle of his speech, he around. Because when he is asking, maybe uh, that's what I, I, I noticed. Maybe because he when he is asking, oh no, 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 no. amen. No one is answering. <laughs> no one. From 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 the start to the end. 
when he is asking, Amen? No one. Why? Simply because the people knows that there is no such thing as gospel of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. That's why it is it is I felt what, what I felt last night is he owns. He's trying to to show the body that he owns the preaching. Do we understand what I mean? That's why there is still this spirit of ownership that is very dangerous, even inside the church. So the reality is there is something, there is a pattern of a Christian's mind, of a of an ownership and the kingdom principles. That's why the Lord said it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Why? Because being rich is different from living in the kingdom. Amen. Rich is I. The kingdom is God. The kingdom is the Lord. Amen. Amen. Read it with me, please. Then, then Jesus, Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you, that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. He didn't say it's impossible. He said it's hard. And uh, in, the, in the preceding verses, it is better, it is easier for a hobbit to go through an eye of a needle Amen. than for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Why? Because it's very hard. Especially us Filipinos, with all due respect, we have been raised in this type of culture. Ownership. Ownership. In fact, there are there are some of us that has this dream. The time will come or the day will come that I will be rich. Or there is this day that comes that those things that I never experienced when I was a child, I will have now that I am here in Dubai. And that is very dangerous. Because your focus is on that dream alone. Before this family used to mock us because we are poor. Now, this is my revenge. To <laughs> one will come. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the reality. Amen. There, there are some that we know of. Not, not here. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Which means I own. Kingdom means He owns. Amen. Sabi mo niya, gata mo please. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. That's how it is. The love of money. This is this this particular verse only. Uh, how many times do we think of 
our savings in a day? How many times do we think of our wallet in a day? Of our bank account in a day? Several? Couple of times? Or we cannot we can count it. Then is this story of, of uh, a Christian lady, housewife. When they arrive from the church, she discovered that when she entered the house, all are not in place, all are, everything is in a mess. And they have been robbed. Someone or some people has robbed them. So she called 911. Then police came, investigated, and all these last questions. And the police got a bit. Uh, let's say, angry with the lady. Why? Because the lady is so happy. Why are you still so happy? The police asked. The lady said, because I don't owe them. I don't own what they robbed of this house. The owner of this house is God. Come on. <laughs> They didn't love me. Wow. They loved wow. God. Wow. So, in that story, the ownership is gone from that house. Because they know the earth is the Lord. Amen. And what? What's up, please? As good as he so do those who pursue him. And what benefit are they to the owners except to please their eyes? There's one more thing that we can notice through this verse of ownership. What? It affords the purpose and the benefit of that thing or that property. Let's say I, I, uh, <coughs> I told this before. A pastor with Two classic cars, antique cars. He showed it to his visitor. Antique, for half a million each dollars. So, he said, wow. The visitor said, wow. It would be so, so, I, I cannot, I cannot uh, be reminded of what he said. It's, it would be so nice to drive these cars. The pastor said, no, antique cars are not made to be driven. I bought them just for my eyes only. I, I clean them twice, thrice a month. I bent over, he's worshiping the car. Is bowing down to the Lord to the point that this is what we are talking about. The ownership is a poor thing. The purpose of the car. The car was made to be driven, not only to be displayed. Yes. Amen. So the visitor said, this pastor has a lot of explanation to do with God. <laughs> One more. Read, please. The sweet of a laborer is sweet, whether they eat little or much, but as for the rich, their abundance from Mr. Lowe's seed. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. The sleep of a laborer is sweet, whether they eat little or much. But as for the rich, their abundance permits them no sleep. 
That's why we said the spirit of ownership creates its own me. <laughs> it creates a sick body, stress. Yeah. You, you to, the, to the point that you don't know where to spend your riches. This is mine. I will do whatever I want to. How many wealthy people that we know of? Uh, boxers? Celebrities? Yeah, but Manny Pacquiao is, is still rich. How many of those uh, well-known personalities that we know of that became rich and then went down to bankruptcy? Yeah. Rolando Navarrete, the, the bad boy from the Jagas, right? Uh, I don't, uh, I, I'm not sure all of these people are born of 80s, right? Because we are, we are 80s. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Musicians, yeah, musicians. Uh, showbiz personalities, they, they, they went to those kind of richness when it comes to, right? And then suddenly you will, you will, you will just heard of them. Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson, yeah? How many mansions, how many tents, of sports cars, expensive sports cars. And now, just a year ago, I think, a couple of years ago, he declared bankruptcy because of the spirit of ownership. Everyone comes naked for their mother's womb, and as everyone comes, so they depart. God is there. Wake up, child. Your system is not working. Follow my system. Amen. Now we come to the principle, the kingdom principle of ownership. That involves recognizing that all things, all things, ultimately belong to God. Amen. That He entrusts us with resources and responsibilities to steward them for his glory. So ownership in the kingdom is stewardship. We use things, but we don't own things. We benefit from things, but we don't own those things. The only principle, as was said earlier, of the kingdom that can eliminate ownership is the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to that lordship and everything will be fine. Amen. Everything will be in place. Democracy doesn't have this this type of lordship. We know that very well. Any official, any government official cannot say that they own anything in the country. Even in the kingdom of the United Kingdom, the UK, I mean, we cannot say that Prince Charles owns the kingdom. The kingdom is owned by the, the royalty. The royalty. The ownership of the kingdom is not, uh, like in, in the UK, it is not an individual ownership. 
it is not owned by the person. So, so opposite of the kingdom we are talking about. Because in that, in the kingdom, in God's kingdom, there is a thing called common will. Have you heard of this? Yes. Common will. Not, not in Quezon City, yeah? Common will. Meaning, the wealth of that kingdom is for the benefit of its citizen. The welfare of the citizens is the common wealth. John 1. I don't know exactly what, what words is it. God said to Adam, you can freely eat of any food those things. It is for the benefit and the welfare of the people. That is common well. And in 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 uh, in democracy there is no such thing. This is mine, that is yours, that is yours, that is yours, that is yours. But in the kingdom, we can we can access everything. Amen. The king says, do not think of what to eat. Do not think of what you will drink, what you will wear, because it is all in the kingdom. That's why there is no such thing as poverty in the kingdom. Because everything is provided by the king, by the owner. Amen. Amen. So that spirit of ownership is also uh, creates this scarcity where this owner is scared of his property being stolen, his property being being. Uh, what you call this? Taken over. So that is why it's so it's so it's so dangerous. That is why the Lord, I believe, wants us to get a hold of this understanding very deeply, very seriously, because no one owns anything in the kingdom. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. And the Lord doesn't want courageousness. In, in, the, in the Ten Commandments, if you remember, do not covet anything from your neighbor. Amen. That is, when you, you think of that, or covetousness started to arise, in a man's life, there is that spirit, spirit of ownership. Amen. And sometimes, sad to say, it's it's unknowing. A man is driven without knowing, without understanding. That's why there is this uh, why 